Okay, I've got to build in this one, this workbench today. I've been trying to figure out XML workbenches. So I've made a big mess of like every workbench I've got. Um, so I was having a play with getting the engine sorted and first I started with electric furnaces. This is, this is basically hooked up now. I tried to get a nuclear system running and I think if I get one, I can put it in this space, but I just have no idea how that works. And I'm not opposed to learning how that works. I just know that it will take forever. Maybe I should just use a generator for this. So I'm going to try clutch slipping these two between the flywheels. We'll permanently run it into a big generator and then I can hook up the rest of these to motors. This is the controller from Clifford. This is for a diesel furnace, so it's a little bit different. So essentially what I need, because the electric furnace is either on or off, so the, the way to do that is probably just with like thresholds or something, or greater than. So we'll get rid of diesel level. There is no fuel. There is no air. There is only temperature and furnace on so let's see i want to probably run my furnace at well 150 is probably okay so we'll say if the furnace is less than 150 uh, and we'll need an and and the key is on which in this case is a flip switch then turn the furnace on that's probably it maybe furnace on two furnaces and the other one goes to all the pumps Um, I should chuck a door in here while I'm, while I'm hanging about here. Is it weird that you have to go through the infirmary to get to the engine room? This all needs to be connected to like work. Actually, the battery could be on this side with the generator. Hmm, I need, I need a battery to go somewhere and I probably could do a lot of batteries. But right now I need a battery so that I can actually make sure this works without infinite fuel or electricity. I'm going to leave the generator disconnected. That way I should be able to measure what the generator is doing. So I need, I need the condensers hooked up to something. I've totally skipped that part. I was thinking like usually you need seawater. So all of that needs to go out to the ocean somewhere. Um, and I've got two different sets. Probably the worst coolant loops you've ever seen. Well, it's not sinking. Um, is it? It's very back heavy. Oh. Uh. Mm. Yes. Turn that on. The furnaces are not on for some reason. And there's no coolant. Hey, this sounds disgusting. I thought they changed the sound of this pump. Oh, this has no fluid. This has no fluid. I thought only the diesel furnace needed coolant to be added. Oh, wait. These pumps are going the same direction. Okay, so that should then finish the loop. I think that's what it was. It was just like the loop was not a loop. That temperature comes up really quick, eh? Doing 150 on the electric furnace basically instantly. So if I can hold like 120C on the boiler, I think we'll be okay. I want high pressure for this because now pressure is what determines the speed of the pistons. So it actually probably doesn't matter if we just let it run away. It doesn't look like the temperature's going up much anyway, like 105. Or it's going up slowly. All the pistons are moving. Very badly. Alright, our pressure dropped. And... I wonder if it's because a lot of steam got sucked out of the boiler. It'd probably be better if we ran at a higher temperature. If this works, maybe I should just keep the electric furnaces what I'm gonna do is say if the target temp is not zero then use a switch box switch
switch that on and send it through so that way if I set this keypad to zero it will go back to 150 C for a target which I might change 170 but that way if I change it to anything other than zero we can play around and find a good temperature I think adding the infirmary really added too many more physics shapes screwed things up a little bit so I guess we'll just wait I think I can probably get rid of some pumps to create a higher pressure I've got heaps and heaps of pumps pushing water from the condensers back in what if I get rid of these pumps the other ones that would be sucking the steam out of the pistons that might help i've also seen captain cockerels made some videos about how to use steam and he's got valves all over his so yeah i might need to put valves on all the pistons so that they can control how much steam or when the steam is being released which is what i'm kind of hoping to do here is by removing those pumps, let the steam accumulate in the pistons and sort of block everything up. That pressure's going up though. Oh, and then it suddenly stopped. I could try putting more water into the boiler. The thought being that if the boiler is full of something, the pressure is going to be high. Right, I'll put it before the pump so that the pump keeps it pressurized. It's annoying that the fluid goes down. So this tank goes down a little bit fresh water is going out of this tank presumably into here because it's replacing the water being turned into steam so I just need to get rid of the pumps these are going pretty slow like 0.2 but that might mean the generator is going pretty quick oh it's fluctuating heaps though 5,000 it's like 8,000 what it's definitely going faster than Clifford though I think Clifford was only going like 42 RPS it might be because the clutches are not fully engaged and it could also be the flywheel mass I think maybe with bigger flywheels it might be able to sustain itself better What do I do about motors? So I do like four medium motors. Gear them up maybe. Got my speed sensor connected. I've got a dial lever. Need a WS. Oh, the hatch on the top. This one here is actually a problem, I think. Because water can get in that. Water's not going to get in that one, that's just always permanently sealed, but it can get in this little one. I might have to put the batteries in the front, which if it's physics flooded shouldn't matter. Oh, wait the back ones don't look like they're moving. So fast 12 12 knots 19 knots very very slow I don't think steam is really gonna get any better than what it is now I kind of feel like it's a bit of a lost cause this thing's spinning very quick and not generating enough power to I guess I can change up to the bigger motors maybe Let's go to the bigger motors and see if that is viable. I'm not even gonna fit in here. No. Damn it. Come on. I actually have no space for them. Well, this wall here is actually. Hmm. I wanna cover it in microcontrollers, but if I get rid of that wall, then it no longer is physics flooded. Maybe I can just put them inside. Is that okay? Yeah, that's probably okay. 
Okay, so the generator goes direct to these four motors only. And there would be another generator in the system which will replenish or which would generate power for all the lights and doors and things. Whatever else needs electricity. I really want to go back to building smaller vehicles, more simple vehicles. Let's say 50%. 50% throttle. Queenie, that's better. Still kind of slow. 28 knots. It's so slow. What if I do like infinite electricity? How much faster is it going to go? Uh, only like double. That's not a massive improvement. Uh, which means that the motor output isn't being spun up as much as it probably needs to be. Like I might be able to get away with putting more gearboxes on. So we're going from three gearboxes on every motor to five gearboxes. I would like it to go a lot faster, that's the thing. And it seems like 40 knots is going to be as fast as it wants to go with conventional means. It's even it's going slower. We've still got infinite electricity on as well, so gearing isn't going to work. I'm going to try a glitch, a glitched motor. So this right here is a, uh, a glitch hour motor thing. Basically once this pipe is connected, it'll just spin. I've never actually used this for propulsion in this way. I've never really used this at all to be honest. What I'm going to do is put it in the roof here and then where this one comes off, I don't need any of that. I can then put on a clutch and I can control this clutch which will be spinning at like crazy crazy speeds and this I don't even know if it needs to be geared up at all I'll just get rid of these motors for now uh, this also needs to go to the front fluid jet somehow I'm just going to use a constant one to engage the first clutch and then throttle lever to control the other ones and get rid of those motors as well so you should hear it that weird sound if we come and have a look if I can get in here whoa we're going fast so it's um yeah it's going very quick and that's good I think for a fluid jet So we're doing 40 knots with 5% throttle. 42 with full throttle. Okay, so it really just doesn't matter what my power output is. This is just a slow thing. See, this is, this is still going for it. We could try gearing. Well, see, it doesn't matter because the output is just insane. We could try pushing fluid into the fluid jet. The fluid flow in is not much. How does this work? That's the out. So if I do the snaily side going up. Okay, so that impeller should end up spinning insanely fast. Which might actually end up sending water for the other fluid jets oh, we're going a little bit faster no we're not going any faster there's just like fluid jets and steam no well, this is just fluid jets right fluid jets have just been nerfed maxing out at 42 knots we're basically underwater so there is no benefit to running an infinity generator after then I won't have to worry about the electricity that's very disappointing I'm interested full 
Oh crap. Let's see if I can launch a torpedo. doing that. I think I'll go back to electric, right? Because what's the point of... Oh, did the tsunami just like roll by and we didn't notice? I need a way to like submerge and stay submerged. We're a bit too buoyant at the moment, I think. We're too aerodynamic. Look at these guys. This is uh, maybe a good time to use the guns. Okay, except there's like no targeting system on us. Oh, do you think I got him? It splashed in the water really close. Where'd he go? Oh, he's behind me. <laughs> it's, the pixelation makes it so hard to tell what's going on. Oh yeah, I got him though. Is he dead? Why has he stopped moving? Wait, is there two of them? Uh, I'm out of ammo. Get that gun put away. Turn back around. It drives pretty well, which is quite interesting. Oh, I didn't connect any of the... Damn it. <laughs> None of the weapons are connected. None of the small arms, the small guns are connected. Feels more like a spaceship than a submarine. Like a, it's very Star Warsy. Oh, he's coming. Nope. See ya. Oh, we're a real submarine now. I need to flip over because the water is coming in from the bottom. I don't know how I'm still going. Oh, there we go. So, um, I guess like this thing here is not needed. It's not proving, it's not providing any benefit. It's just a different way to make the boat go, make the sub go. Um, just running the large generator is also providing, like, you know, enough power output to not be bothered doing any glitchy stuff. If I can just run it off four motors, then I'll just run it off four motors. Um, so yeah, how does depth hold work? Or do I need to add more weight or ballast so that I can drop down? Because, like, these spaces on the sides are basically ready to be ballast tanks right or should I just add barrels into them so that we can add more weight I mean the front needs to be heavier let's put some barrels in the front just to bring the nose down so right now I'm just trying to sink it I'm trying to get it to the point where a little bit of input from anything will make it go up and down Okay, so I've got the same amount of barrels on both sides. This is all flooded. Physics flooded. I might try smooth off these internal sections. One of them is very close to the torpedo tube. Yeah, I don't think any of this exists on the other side. It's all outside. 
So where does it sit in the water now? It's real buoyant, eh? Super buoyant. I guess I need batteries because we're going to be going for like steam, electric, something, something. So maybe I'll just chuck some of these big batteries up the front to create some more weight in the nose. The barrels still give off a better like ratio, weight to size, but I should be able to get some batteries in here at least. Only one. Only one. There's no point having a physics flutter in here anymore. I'm just going to chuck barrels everywhere in here. So there's one battery up the front. Wow. Um, we've got two batteries down here. I don't know what I just deleted. I'm thinking I should put batteries in the sides somewhere like if there's a section in the side that's open for a battery like this would be a really good spot actually yeah that's probably quite good if I can stack up heaps of batteries then this might be able to just have a mode where you can like turn it off and run it on just the batteries so I'll wall this off in case any physics flutters want to do some shenanigans. Uh, I wasn't in symmetry. <laughs> God damn. Oh, there you go. Front's sinking a lot better now. It's still crazy buoyant though. I don't think... I don't think there's a way to make this neutrally buoyant. If it were to be neutrally buoyant, I think the water line would be right up to where the door is. Like, right up to this level. It does look like the rear is up a lot more but it's still crazy buoyant I'm gonna try and outline a ballast tank so I'll use the side that's got the torpedo on it so I don't break anything yes okay I'm pretty confident that that is the same on both sides um I could put some hatches along here which would let me fill it up really quickly. I'll put one at the front, one at the back. And then I'll need pumps for in and out. So those pumps can all be the ones that control water. I'll try and seal off this. Probably should just physics flood this, this area. And then we can use these two hatches, I guess, to fill up with water very quickly and assuming there's nothing on the other side above that does not look like there is this would be a great place to do an air tank I have to be careful about how high up I go because I think it's on this side it looks a lot more open yeah for some reason there is a floor here what I'll do is I'll just carry on from the same wall. And I guess we just go right up to the roof. Yeah. So then along this, there's going to be this big port, which is just a lot of small ports. And these are all going to have gas filters on them and then probably valves valves are very difficult to put in such a tight pattern or a pump would be better right I can have one side pumping in and the other side pumping out this is so dumb is this how submarines work at all and then from here I'm going to close off this bit or this end and smooth it all off then I probably also want gas meters in the bottom one and liquid meters so as the water if water rushes in through these hatches it'll force the air up into the gas filters in here and then we can turn on all the pumps to suck it in so we'll suck all the air out of the water ballast tank 
which can then allow all the water to come in. And then if we close those hatches, and we decide we've got enough water inside there, we could pump some more in or pump some out, depending on how much pressure we need in there. And then we can just pressurize this tank with more air. So if we want to push all the water out of our ballast tank, we'll have all this pressurized air in this tank, which I don't think you can spawn with any specific pressure. But I might be able to get these huge tanks. Uh, they're a bit too big. Large tanks. And maybe some, yeah, I can use these little ones. So all of these spawn with 50 atmospheres of pressure. This is probably overkill. But this is just allowing... I need to... And that. This is just allowing these air ballast tanks to run at a very high pressure so that they, they have enough air to push out whatever water pressure is in here. Um, it'd be really good actually if instead of or along with the hatches maybe I had some if I had some liquid filters as well mm, we've got air but no water so if I push this we get more air and water what oh is air coming in no where's the air coming from the air can't be coming in from this top one can it because all the pumps are off we should be getting less air okay we're getting less air and we're getting more water i'm going to connect that button to all the air pumps that should be pumping up okay so we should have like no air and heaps of water and i guess once i have no air in there i can turn those pumps off but then the hatch will also close because I'm silly and only use one button. Mm. It doesn't look like it's sunk down that much at all. But it's got heaps of water on now. And all the air must be compressed. Or a lot of the air is compressed. Okay, it's taking forever. And it's basically doing nothing. I wonder if I turn on like player damage. No, I was thinking um, I might get the pressure damage. So it can't be that pressurized in here. And then inside the air tank, is this pressurized? Oh, <laughs> very pressurized in here. It doesn't say what the pressure is though. These tanks say nine and they're just connected to here open. So I'm guessing we're at like nine atmospheres. Wow. So like imagine if I tried to pressurize this whole room to keep the water out, you would have to be most likely above nine, but nine is already damaging. I wonder if because there's heaps of air in this tank, even if it's compressed, does it still create buoyancy? Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about Paladin anymore. Specifically because it's a submarine and it doesn't want to sink. Maybe we'll just like sit on it for a couple days and think about it. I'll show you something else that I'm working on. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.